Merry Christmas. Today is the first Sunday after Christmas Day, December 27th, 2020. I welcome you to Good Shepherd Barhaven and thank you for watching. We are an Anglican and a Lutheran church and the service that follows includes prayers and songs, readings and a reflection. The service this morning will begin as we light the candles on the Advent wreath. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Light and peace to you in Jesus Christ our Lord. On this first Sunday after Christmas, we once again recall the hope we have in Christ and light the candles of hope, peace, love, and joy. On this holy day, we also light our last candle to remember the birth of our Lord and Savior. As the prophets promised, the prophets promised so long ago, we celebrate his coming with his blessed mother Mary and Joseph, his earthly guardian, with the shepherds who first beheld his humble beauty, and with all the hosts of heaven who have worshipped him from before the worlds were made we gather in praise of Jesus Christ. We light this candle to remember that his life is the light of all people, a light which the darkness can never overcome. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you, for the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ made known to all people, who came with all who came to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift. Amen.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with a garment of salvation, and he has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise 
to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until our vindignation shines out like the dawn, and our salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindignation, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be crowned of be-, be a crown of beauty and the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Gospel reading from Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, for every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Mary's last month of her pregnancy was frantic and uncomfortable. Luke's Gospel for today sees Mary and Joseph conforming to pious Jewish practices. They had their newborn son circumcised and they brought him in the temple and they offered a sacrifice for their own purification. While they were at the temple, Simeon offered a prophecy, and we heard the familiar words of what we call the Nunc Dimittis. Maybe you're not familiar with it, but in Anglican liturgy, this has long been recited during services of evening prayer. It begins, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, or in a more contemporary version, Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, 
a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of our people Israel. Simeon, who spoke these words, was inspired by the Holy Spirit to come into the temple just as Mary and Joseph were presenting Jesus. The prophecy that he had heard, that he would live to see the Messiah, was fulfilled, and Simeon was then content to die. What do you want to see before your life is over? Have you got some sort of bucket list? Do you think you'll want to travel again? Maybe visit the Holy Land or Canterbury. Maybe all you want to see is closer to home, something for your children or your grandchildren. Simeon's desire was to see the unfolding of God's promise for his people. He wanted to see the light, and when the baby Jesus was put into his arms, his desire was satisfied. He was content. The light that he named, a light to lighten the Gentiles, was a light for all. A light or a revelation for all. Simeon continued his pronouncement. He blessed Mary, the child's mother, and spoke of the falling and rising of many. He said that Jesus was to be a sign that would be opposed. He introduced his prediction of Mary's grief at the death of her son. Simeon, pious, hopeful, with the Spirit of God upon him, shows us a devout response to God's promise. The Spirit had led him to the temple. Well, Mary and Joseph were there because they were fulfilling the requirements of the law. Simeon acknowledged that some would reject Jesus and others accept him. Jesus will be disputed, rejected. The world did not know him, John's Gospel tells us. His own people did not accept him. There was another prophet after Simeon, Anna, who welcomed and hailed the Messiah, an elderly woman always in the temple, and she recognized redemption in him. The Gospel goes on to see Mary and Joseph returning to Nazareth with Jesus, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and God's favor was upon him. This child, this, this, Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing, haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Lord Jesus, we pray. Through the incarnation, you were made fully human. And through the inc incarnation, you are fully present from exile to restoration, from birth to death. God, you have been with us from the beginning of time. Thank you that nothing we do, no mistakes we will ever make, no rules we will ever break can separate us from your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Jesus' family returned home at the end of the Gospel reading. We've returned to our homes for another round of pandemic precautions as we close out 2020. We have this year learned that we can get through rough times together for God is with us. So let us add our blessings and praise to the newborn child, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us open our eyes to see the mystery of faith and claim the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. We remember that our Savior was born in a manger and walked as a humble, suffering servant a suffering Savior. Lord, help us to share the love of God with everyone we encounter, to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and stand against injustice and oppression. Let us pray for the ending of this global pandemic and health and safety for our health care workers. So we continue to pray for peace. Thank you, Lord, for our families and friends and for this holiday season, for the many blessings we have received. We rejoice with the best gifts of hope, peace, joy, and the love of God in Jesus Christ. God, 
with us always. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Effective this morning at midnight, we have moved into the red stage of our pandemic plan for 28 days. This means our church building will be closed and all in-person worship services are canceled. The church mail, email, and phone will be monitored during the closure. And I invite you to keep a watch on our website at goodshepherdbarhaven.ca for updates and information. And if you'd like to make a donation while our expenses continue and you are unable to drop things off. Video services like this one will be put up each Sunday during the shutdown. Our service this morning continues with, What Child Is This?
In joy and humility, let us pray to the Creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. We pray for all who confess the name of Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. In the Anglican Church in Canada, we pray for the director, Joe Vissis, and the staff of the Communications and Information Resources, director Hannah Gosh G, and the staff of a Financial Management and Administration. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Canada family, we pray for Reverend Lyle Mackenzie, Assistant to the National Bishop of Worship. In our diocesan family, we pray for the New Year's Eucharist from our cathedral and for Archbishop Linda Nichols, who will be preaching in that service. In our companion diocese, the Diocese of Jerusalem and the Middle East, we pray for the Redeemer Church, Amen, Jordan, and we pray for Church of the Holy Family, Roha Israel. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth in time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O God. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the River Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become a kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus. 
Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the Word made flesh. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.